Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the third day of FII. How's everyone feeling? Take a seat, please. How's everyone feeling? Yeah? Great, no response. It means that people are excited, happy to be here, who knows? Who are we gonna get you energetic this morning? Welcome, I'm Eleni Jokas, I'm anchor and correspondent at CNN, and I'm just delighted to be joined by these incredible humans, not replaced by AI just yet and robots. I'd like to welcome my guests here, Eamon Al-Falaj, uh, CEO of Thicker, Marcelo Croe, uh, founder and CEO and board member of the Chloe Group, as well as T-Mobile United States. He's also with Sheen. Welcome, sir. And Hong Nam Kun, uh, President and CEO of Samsung, Samsung Engineering uh, in South Korea. Welcome, everyone. Um, our, our topic this morning is synthesis economy. And what's really funny about this topic is that we all had to really Google what it means and what it is to understand its, its ultimate definition. So we, we're going to go through this uh, together. Um, and, and we're hoping we're going to find some headway in terms of what it means. But before we do that, I want to time travel with all of you. I want you to go back to 1998, and I want you for a minute to think about what life was like back then. 1998, we started to have mobile phones. They were very simple. We were, I mean, our internet uh, connectivity was very slow. Do you remember that sound when you used to log on to the internet? Fast forward to where we are today, and it's been an incredible evolution and journey. I now want you to fast forward and leap forward to 2035. And for a second, I want you to think about what it would look like. What our devices would look like? What would your businesses uh, look like? How would AI be integrated into that? How would technology change our lives and change our businesses? And where do we sort of fit in into this AI revolution? And I'm hoping that all of you could answer this question for me. So Eamon, I'm gonna start with you. 2035, what does that look like? Uh, first, thanks, Helene, to, uh, for having me. And I'm great and honored to be with Marcelo and Hong. Uh, I hope I can bring something great for the uh, distinguished uh, audience. Uh, well, first of all, future is going to be pride. That's my, my, my opinion on this. Uh, why? Because if we really travel back in time, as you mentioned, we will see that the world has adapted technologies in a very good way. We became more resilient to our change. We became more mature in understanding innovation and, and basically understand how to protect uh, people, society, how to make sure that everything is, uh, uh, everything is, is for the sake of humanity, how yeah. to become very human-centric from all perspectives, business perspective, technology perspective, as well as actually what we're serving and what we're doing. Uh, I believe uh, looking at it from people perspectives, regulation perspectives, government, businesses, uh, everyone thrives to make sure <coughs> that they bring the best for uh, yeah. society and people. Okay, interesting. Yeah. We're getting there. Marcelo, 2035, what does that look like for you? So Many devices, plugged in. So 2035, I believe it will be a world in which we are all incredibly connected, where you know, pretty much every human being will not only have a device that we use, but I would believe that we, pretty much every single asset, every single thing that we have will be connected. And you know, when I start thinking of what changes are we going to see, let's talk about healthcare for a second. I believe that we're going to have, today we call them wearables, but in the future it might be something that sits inside our body that is constantly monitoring or the like different... Like a chip in your body? Like maybe a chip or a wearable or anything that will be, be able to monitor what is going on with our body. And what happens is you're going to be able to know ahead of time, you know, are you going to have a stroke? You're going to, ha you're, you're going to know whether you might have a stroke before you have it, a heart attack before you have it. You're going to know what disease is. And I think that's going to allow us to potentially live much, much longer. And when you live much longer, a lot of things changes, right? We're going to need more food. The insurance business is going to change dramatically. I'm just thinking, what does this do to the pharmaceutical and healthcare industry? <laughs> I think it's going to change dramatically. And I mean, there's so many, I believe that, you know, 10 years from now, pretty much every industry will be different. But I think the biggest, biggest disruption will be that we're going to live here. Think of us as our bodies as replaced. We're going to be able to replace some organs ahead of time because you're going to know what's going to fail. And imagine a world where we're living 
you know, not 100, but 125 yeah. years. And what's going to, pretty much everything will change in terms of the amount of land we'll occupy, the amount of food we'll consume. And Think the question is, do we have enough resources for that, right? <laughs> okay, Hong, I, I want to get, get you to jump in here. Um, you had a fantastic um, explanation for what synthesis economy is. And by the way, we're all relying on you to solve many problems in the world because you're with Samsung Engineering, you're focusing on, on figuring out new ways that AI can help solve the oil and gas dilemma in terms of making it cleaner. So give me a rundown of what you're envisaging. Okay, uh, that, that is a really important thing to our industry, as well as other industries. Yeah. But people starting our explanation, I just a short brief explanation who we are. But Samsung Engineering design and build industrial plant and provide full value chain service in oil and gas and decarbonization and energy transition and industrial environmental sectors. Even we are not an IT company, but I hope it's a good opportunity for me to explain how AI technology is used in our plant industry. Yeah. I give you one sample. But in our industry, there are many uncertainties, likely any other industry as well. And there is, there is great need to increase productivity and manpower mobilization to the site during three to five years project execution period. Yeah. So in order to solve these difficulties, we have no choice. We seriously consider how we can utilize AI technology with our accumulated experiences and innovative solutions. So have you solved it? Have you figured it out? Yes. So okay, tell me. I, I, more detailed sample. Is, can I? Yes, yes. Okay, currently we use two solutions, software-based and hardware-based. Mm. For the software solutions, we develop EDP, which means engineering data platform. This data-centric system enable all engineering discipline work together simultaneously yeah. instead of having each engineering discipline work sequence. Got you. Because this EDP is supported by AI technology and our accumulated experiences. Brilliant. Then... Second, we, okay. Okay. Go for it. Okay, okay, we, okay. we've got lots to get through. Okay, okay. Just something that Marcelo <laughs> mentioned, because I, I mentioned the word, you know, chip. Would, would a chip... Um, be a viable option, and I know you and I were having a big debate about chips offline before this conversation. Show of hands, how many of you would want to have a chip inserted for health reasons, for making your life easier? Would you allow that? Would you want to have a chip inserted in your body? Yes, no? Okay. Most what do. You, what do you think? 40%. Of that <laughs> 40%. Would you? Of course. Would you? Sure. Yes, Hong? Yeah. Would you? Uh, well, that's not a chip. I mean, that's like inside your body. That's coming. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. Look, Marcelo, um, you're with, uh, you know, you, you're on the board of, of Sheen. And I think, you know, when I was looking into this, you know, one of the things that sets you apart is the incredible AI that goes behind what you're doing. And it kind of got me thinking of the industrial revolution in the textile industry back in the 1800s, where everyone was afraid of what it would do to uh, jobs. So what is the new industrial revolution or AI revolution for the textile industry? Because you guys are miles and leaps ahead of what the other factories are, are doing around the world. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to compliment that beautiful sheen jacket that you're wearing. <laughs> it's actually Zara. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, cheating on you. Sorry, Marcelo. <laughs> all right. Well, the next one you'll buy. No, getting serious. I think the best way to think of Shein is Shein is a disruptor. You like to, if you look at the fashion world, there used to be old fashion, and that is your traditional retail, where you walk in, it's hard to find your size, sometimes you don't find the color. And then there were the innovators, Sara, for example, yeah. which basically they grab old fashion and they made it faster, and they call it fast retail today. And we like to think of ourselves as new fashion, and new fashion means it's a new economy in which we're just producing goods based on customer's demand. Think of it as a bespoke model where pretty much every day we produce two to 3,000 new products and we're able to produce in minimum batches of 100 or 200 units. And from there on, we're able to ship to 150 countries to hundreds of millions of people 
but we're doing it based on your needs. You know, it's, you know, there's a part of AI that is basically predicting what are going to be the customer needs, and therefore we're able to ship our products you know, on a day-to-day -day basis without actually accumulating any inventory. So you, in that case, you're reducing the famous waste that traditional retail has had of 30%, 40%, in which you have a buyer trying to predict what customers are going to want. Why are you doing it so cheaply? Well, if you think about it, most of the expenses in retail come from having inventory, having working capital. In this yeah. case, we're basically designing the product, manufacturing and shipping it in less than seven days. So we have no inventory, there is zero waste. And this waste. is all because of technology and AI and the way that you've been I mean, it allows doing. us. it allows us to basically <laughs> predict what are going to be the customer behavior. If you look at your app today, you know, we have a pretty good idea of what you like. And therefore, when you go to your app, you're going to, we're going to show you something very different than we're going to show him. And that's all technology driven. And that's why Sheen today is the world's, you know. I'm going to get the audience involved again. I'm having fun with this. How many of you have bought from Sheen or know someone that have bought for, has bought from Sheen? <laughs> <Everyone. That's laughs> fascinating. Everyone's very hush hush about it, by the way. Yeah. We'll talk about the controversy later. I'm not going to let you get away with uh, some of the other things. Um, Eamon, jump in here for me. I mean, we, we've spoken about two really interesting businesses that are utilizing AI. And when we were preparing for this, we were asking ourselves, you know, how late are we in adapting and adopting uh, AI into our businesses? And you know, the trends that you've been seeing, whether it's from a government perspective or whether it's from the private sector, where do we stand right now? Um, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, we're very late all the time. When it comes to technology, you will always be late. Why? Because uh, we have tons amount of technologies and thoughts, ideas out there have not yet been navigated. Uh, funny story, if you don't mind, like my, my eight-year-old son, I asked him, uh, he, he asked me to have a cell phone. I said, you gotta wait until you become 18. And then he says, no, when I'm 18, I wanna have a teleportation. That's important for you. And I was like, what is a this? What? Teleportation. Oh, teleportation? Yes. Oh, crikey. I was like, what is, what is this exactly? Is it, does it exist? He says, no, it will exist. Wow. I was like, what is it exactly? He says, something that I can go to New York in less than two minutes. I was like, wow, that's a very <laughs> good topic to talk about. Those are, are, are the stories that we need to always be uh, aspire to, to think of, because in reality, um, we have ahead of us tons amount of thoughts, ideas that has to be explored. And, and having all uh, great people, like, like uh, those companies and governments supporting everybody. Some governments are, are really ahead of the game, some governments are not. We need to be also mindful. And my worrisome here is that we want to make sure that our enhancement, our technological enhancements are always mindful to people, are always mindful to human beings. Because today we have a ratio of one to one device worldwide. For each, every human being has one device corresponding to them. That's, that's on average. And in 2030, probably we'll have 29 billion devices, which means we have one to four ratios. And this keeps me a little bit thinking that do we have enough, as you mentioned, resources, activities? Uh, 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 do we have frameworks, ethics frameworks, etc.? that serves everybody around the globe. Yeah, exactly. So think about the value chains, the raw materials, the rare earths that will be required. We'll really have problems, right, in terms of the supply demand scenarios because of some trade tensions happening with China and the US. But, you know, that's for another conversation. But I want, I want to jump in here. If Eamon's son wants to see teleportation by 20, well, by the time he's 18, I don't know how many <laughs> years that is, but what skills will be required? You know, that's the big thing. It's like, what are the skills of the future? And how, do you, how are you dealing with, with that skills deficit in your business? Okay, one thing, I will say like this. AI is recently new digital capability. Yeah. People say AI will replace the human, but I have a total different opinion. AI strength is in prediction, okay. while human strength is in judgment. So I'm not going to get replaced? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, great. So I believe you might. Uh, they <laughs> complement each other. 
But over the last three years, our company transformed our work processes together with AI technology and digital information, uh, digital technologies. And we have put 10% of our workforce into reskilling. How can we utilize AI technology into our industries? As I mentioned before, our EDP, Engineering Data Platform, is one of the, our reskilling results. And then continuously we upskill again our workforce. Okay, got you. Marcelo, you wanted to so jump I in? Think, I think we're off for a rude awakening. You know, it, it, in my prediction, about 35 to 40 percent of the workforce is going to have to be reskilled. So think about it. One out of every three people job is going to be completely different. So that's going to change things dramatically. That's going to change the way we, you know, we're going, the, the amount of budget and allocation we're going to have to put in our companies to basically be continuously teaching people new skills is mind-blowing. And I'm talking, you know, maybe even higher. And then if you think about it, we're going to have an obligation to be able to provide that training. So think about it. Now we complain that people want to work only three, four days a week. We're going to have to dedicate about two days a week to just training to all of our employees so they can learn new skill sets. Yeah, what are so, these skill sets, by the way? What do we need to learn? I don't think we truly know, but what we know is that... We don't know? I mean, we have a general idea, but what we're saying is wow. that a lot of the workforce today, they're going to have to move to different jobs. You're going to have to learn machine learning. They're going to have to understand AI, the functionality of AI. How do you actually complement the knowledge that you're getting from AI, the knowledge you're getting from data? Because a lot of the, a lot of the jobs that a lot of people are doing, the repetitive jobs, are going to be supplemented by robotics, by machine automation, by a lot of different ways. So I think we're up for the world changing a lot more dramatically than, hey, AI is coming. You know, I believe that 35 to 40 percent of people's job is going to be completely different. So, in broad terms, the macro thing, we need, you know, 30 to 40 percent of people need to be reskilled. You know, we need to think about that differently. We're going to be um, requiring more resources because we're going to live longer. So we need more food, we need more everything, and we need more rare earths. <laughs> it's making me nervous. I'm not going to lie. But... Uh, if, you, if you don't mind, let me add to Marcelo. I, I mean. It's, it's really nice to hear that we will train AIs, and this is nice. What I'm afraid of is that all devices around the globe, they will train themselves. And this is where we want to be mindful, I guess. So are you worried about that? Yes, I am. Yeah? Do you think that there's a big risk with AI? That I mean, we've seen if those petitions, trains, we should stop, uh, you know... Um, you're right. I mean, if it trains itself, if we depend on those devices to train themselves, then this is un... Uh, it's, it's hard to predict how this will end up like. Do you have AI anxiety um, in terms of what ChatGPT, for example, could do and all of that? I mean, we've seen global IT CEOs saying, whoa, we need to slow things down. I don't. I mean, I, I think AI can bring a lot of greatness. I think AI is what we're going to fix the education gap we have in the world, and that's huge. I mean, AI will allow us to bring education to poorer communities than in the past couldn't have access to. And comp I, if, if, if there was a cure for education, I think AI will do it. Okay, so we've only got a couple of minutes left. There's one other question I want to bring up, and this is very important, it's close to my heart. I grew up in South Africa, I've seen inequality, I travel across the continent. Global South must not be left behind. Emerging markets should not be left behind. When we say four devices per person, we talk about chips, we talk about advancements. Are we going to be seeing um, segmentation globally where some economies are going to be leapfrogging far quicker than others? Are, are we going to be able to take everyone with us in this evolution? Who would like to? I, I think everyone will have a chance. Yeah? Marcelo? I think you're spreading the chance and AI and technology actually allows innovation to happen anywhere. You don't need to be in Silicon Valley today to innovate. And I, I tell one thing. During this FII 7, we have many discussed about this AI technology and IT solutions. However, I believe AI technology and solution should be driven by human-centric approach for prosperous human development. We don't forget the human-centric development. Yeah, and then AI, do you think technology can solve some of these global challenges like climate change, inequalities, access, healthcare? It will be possible to change to global, yeah. the global economy or global climate. We'll enhance it. 
Huh? And it will enhance the chances. <laughs> it, will, it will enhance the probabilities look <laughs> better. That's fantastic. We didn't talk about cybersecurity and issues like that, but of course that comes into play. We have to wrap it up. Thank you very much for your time. It was such a pleasure to have you on stage with me. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. And next time I'll, I'll wear a sheen jacket, yeah? <laughs> Thank you. Thanks.